This conference will now be recorded. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Ima. Appreciate that. All right, First Corinthians 110, family. Uh, then we're going we're to get all we need tonight prayerfully and uh, bid each other farewell. All right. Um, First Corinthians 110, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. And that's something that we read uh, just, just uh, from my bro that's, that's new here. That's something that we read every time we get on to put us in that mindset and to keep us in that spirit that this is what we should be aiming for and desiring, uh, which is stay on one accord with uh, Hamashiach first with Christ, uh, who is our head first, and then uh, with each other. That's the way to stay uh, unified. And that only can be done. Uh, through this word. And so um, even with that, when we look at that word division, I, we're going to get into that tonight because that has to do or deal with uh, having a rebellious spirit or being rebellious, right? It is to uh, to contend. And so we're going to get into the scriptures. We're going to look at this word and then show a couple of examples. Uh, and then we're going to be out of here because that spirit um, is ramping up. It's always been here. But when we talk about what we're trying to do, which is aim towards the mark, which is Christ, we see that spirit uh, ramping up, which is trying to get us away from the book. It's trying to get you to rebel. It's trying to get you to rebel uh, from the most high. And this is something that I was talking to uh, a couple of brews um, through, through the little group text that we got. And matter of fact, we, we're going to take a look at it. Let's go to uh, let's go to Genesis three real quick. I'm going to take my time with it. I'm trying not to rush. We go to Genesis three real quick. Just so we, just so we can understand the uh, the tactics of the enemy. Um, last week we was dealing with you know how to deal with enemies within the household as far as how we should how we should react how we should carry ourselves. Um, but we always need to understand our true enemy and what what the tactic is, what the plan is, the game plan is as far as um, dealing with the Most High's children, the ones who are aiming towards righteousness. This is an everyday thing uh, that's going on and we have to protect ourselves by staying in this word, right? Because the enemy is coming and he's subtle, right? He's subtle and he's crafty. All right, we just, we're gonna run this real quick. Uh, all right, three and uh, verse one. We're not gonna run the whole thing, but I just want to see this. It says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, have God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when a woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the, to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband which uh, with her and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they, they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, right? Now, I want us to catch this, and uh, I said this before, but I want us to understand this. The serpent never told Eve to eat from the tree. The serpent never told Eve to eat from the tree. Never told, never told her to go to the tree and take a bite, right? What he did was he put it in her mind to desire something that the Most High had told her was off limits, right? That the Most High had told her that when you do this thing, then a punishment or a judgment is going to come to pass. And so this is the this is the 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 game plan of Hasatan. This is what he tries to do when it comes to us, right? And sometimes it comes through other. Sometimes it comes through television, movies, music. It comes through other people, family members, whatever it is. You see this spirit, and that spirit is trying to get you to do what? It's trying to get you to rebel. It's trying to get you to desire something outside of the most high trying to get you to seek after something that has nothing to do with him to bring judgment upon yourself right so when you contend with the most high's word 
then uh, uh, you risk bringing, bringing judgment upon you. You risk bringing a curse upon you, right? Because he has to deal with the rebellious who are who are within the camp because you will pollute everybody else who's standing next to you, right? If you have that rebellious spirit on you, then you can't you can't be uh, with the ones who he deems to be righteous. He got to get you up out of there because you can risk bringing fear upon those, especially somebody who is a baby in this walk uh, and who isn't fully learned yet. If you are a rebellious person, then you're going to cause that person to be rebellious against the Most High. You're going to cause them to lose faith in the Most High, to lose belief, to not trust them. And for those who that happens to, woe unto you, right? We see what happened to Adam and Eve. Once they, they both uh, uh, ate the fruit of the tree, they desired something that the Most High said was off limits, then now we see we in this, this cursed flesh, right? That, that now uh, uh, we have to suffer death when death wasn't even on the table when, when Adam was first created, right? This is the plan that the enemy has set forth to get you away or to get you to contend to go against the Most High's word, all right? So the word that we're looking at, um, We'll get into the Strong's real quick. Uh, it's going to be H, H4784. It's going to be the word Mara. H4784. Uh, let me pull it up. All right. The word is mara. It is uh, to be contentious, to be rebellious, uh, be disobedient towards. Uh, let's see what other words we got. It says to be bitter, right? That is that is the the, the root definition of it. To be bitter, uh, to resist, to provoke, all of those things, right? So when we dealing with when we dealing with a rebel. Understand that we're not talking about uh, a rebel uh, today, like rebelling against being a rebel against the, the system or the government, anything like that. Even though this word still applies, whenever you see a rebel, even today, who's contending with the with the powers that be, those powers that be, they seek to destroy them, right? They seek to uh, 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 bring them down or to uh, uh, disassemble them, right? Break them apart, because you can't have rebels uh, leading everybody else to, to rebel. Right. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this in a biblical sense when we talk about rebelling against the most high and what that means for us. If we have that mentality or we have that heart towards the most high to rebel, because each and every last one of us, you have a calling on your life. Each and every last one of you has a lane that the most high has set for you to walk in. You have a course that he has set you on. He, you got things for uh, uh, he has things for you to do. He got people for you to talk to. He got he got people for you to pray for, uh, to bring a word to, to be an example for, to shine a light to. So if you are contending with his word, if you are contending against him, he's gonna get you up out of the way, right? Because and he'll not only will he get you up out of the way. Let me say that he'll get you up out of the way and put somebody else in that place that's gonna do it righteously. Don't ever give aside yourself to think that he needs us to do anything, right? It's a it's a pleasure that we're being uh, that we're righteous vessels for the Most High's use, right? So when you call yourself being a rebel to resist him, you're telling him that your word is bitter to me, and I and I don't want to uh, 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 I don't want to consume it. Not only are you saying that, you're saying that I'm going to create my own word that I find is more perfect. So uh, rebellion. Right. It leads you to what? Self-righteousness, arrogance, pride, because you think you know better. This is what is this is what Hasatan started out with. This is why he is the one who sinned from the beginning. Because that is his heart. To want to make himself as God. So when you are rebellious or you have that spirit on you, you are seeking to exalt yourself above the most high by going against his word and making up your own word. Right? Most high gotta get you up out of there. Um real quick, let's go to uh let's go to number 14. We're gonna see this in action. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. All right. We're going to actually have to run this from, did I say number 14? Hold on. Yeah, that's right. Um, we're going to run this from, uh, we have to run it from 13. All right, yeah. So uh, when we get to 13, we'll start at we'll start at uh, 16. But just understand that as they're about to go into the land, uh, notice we're about we're about to take a portion of the uh, of the promised land. And the Most High, the Most High commanded Moses, or Moses sent out 12. He sent out 12 spies uh, to go and spy out the land, right, and bring back a report. Right, he sent them to spy out the land and bring back a report. Now, this is what we this is what we got to understand all the way up until this time. Every last one of these people that's here, every last every last one of these spies have seen the works of the Most High. They've been delivered from Egypt. They've been given water out of a rock. Right. They've seen they've seen the Most High come down in a cloud on top of the mountain, speak to them with the thunders and lightnings and the, and the shofar that sounded that sounded long and loud to the point where they didn't even want to hear his voice anymore. Right. They've seen all these things. They witnessed these things. So they have an understanding of who it is, uh, of who the Most High is, of who they're dealing with, the power that they're dealing with. And so he tells them to go and spy out the land, and he's already promised them that he's going to bring them into the land and that they're going to inhabit it, right? So let's take a look at this. Uh, starting from uh, Numbers 13, verse 16. It says, now these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshea, the son of Nun, uh, Yehoshua, and Moses sent them to, to spot the land of Canaan and said unto them, get ye up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see what the and see the land, what it is and the people that dwell up therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that, that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad and what cities they be that they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not. And be ye of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of the, of the first of the uh, uh, first ripe grapes. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zan unto, unto Rahab. And the men come to Hamath, and they ascended by the south and came to Hebron, where Ahamon, uh, Shashai, and Telma, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook of a skull and cut down and cut down from this a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between and they bear it between two upon a staff, and they brought up the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook of a skull because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from this. And they returned from searching of the land after forty days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them and said, we came into the land, whether thou sent us, whether thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. The cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Now I think it's going to mention this. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to mention it. But when you think, of, when you look at the children of Anak, the children of Anak at that time were giants, right? They were giants, similar to uh, uh, Goliath. When we read that story about David and Goliath, uh, the children of Anak were giants. So not only did they go spy out the land, but they looking at the terrain. They said, "Man, they got walled in cities. The people are strong." And they said, "And the children of Anak are there." So they said, "The people look like they can get down, and you got these giants there." Right. Let's keep reading. It says the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb uh, stealed the people before Moses and said, let us go up once and possess it, for we are well above to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger then we now i want us to understand this right we're gonna we're gonna look at two things we're gonna come right back here uh but we're gonna look at two things real quick go to exodus 
Uh, I want to say it's go to Exodus. Uh, I think it's nine. No, 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 no. Um, Exodus 13. And we'll start from we'll start from verse 12 and run it down. I want us to see something here. Because the most high already knew what he was doing. That's why when we get when we when we get the numbers, we got to understand when he brought them to this point, they were supposed to already be set, it was supposed to already be established in their hearts that Yah was with them in the power that they had with him. It was supposed to already be established in his heart, in their hearts, uh, who the Most High was and what they could do if he was with them, if he was their God, all right? So to come here, when we get the numbers, to hear that, right, you got you to gotta look at Joshua and Caleb because they just like, man, what are y'all talking about? But well, we're going to get it. All right, uh, Exodus 13, 12. It says that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that open the matrix and every every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the male shall be the Lord's. And every firstling uh, of an ass thou shalt redeem with the lamb. And if thou will not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And all the firstborn of the man among thy children shall thou redeem. And it shall, it shall be when thy son asketh thee in the time to come, saying, what is this that thou shalt say unto him? By the strength of the hand of the Lord brought us up from Egypt, from the house of bondage. And it came to pass when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the matrix, being males. But all the firstborn of my children I redeem. And it shall be for a token upon thine hand and for frontless between thine eyes. For by the strength of the hand of the Lord brought us forth out of Egypt. So. The Most High had set something up, right? He set something up that they would redeem the firstborn of every male that opened at the matrix, right? And now supposed to, uh, uh, the understanding of it was supposed to be that it's because the Most High redeemed us, right? The Most High brought us out with a mighty hand because at this time, e Egypt was the, was a strong power. Egypt was Egypt was a, 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 a the lead nation. They was the strongest nation. And he brought them out. They didn't do anything. They didn't fight not one battle. It says that the Most High brought them out with a strong hand. That he is the one who delivered them. He freed them from bondage. And destroyed Pharaoh. Right? Let's keep going. That's not, that's not what I wanted to get to, but it's just important to understand that, that he's done all these things already. All right, uh, where are we at? Uh, 17. It says, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God let them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. But God let the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. So the Most High, when he brought them out, even though he had delivered them from a strong hand, even though he had delivered them from a strong power, right? And he he delivered them with a mighty hand so much so that they didn't have to do anything. All they had to do was just pack up and leave, right? When he delivered them, he said that this shall be a, a, a token upon our hand and frontless between, the, between your eyes, which means you need to always remember this. You need to always remember that this thing has been done, but not only did he do that but it says that he decided not to lead them the way of the philistines even though it was near lest they do what lest they repent which means lest they be afraid right and turn back and go into egypt because he already know was that he already know uh, uh that if they were to see the philistines and they were to see that army that they don't believe in the most high enough to actually stand because at this time, even though the Most High had done this, he know the hearts of the people, right? It's similar to us when we when we uh 
when we first get into this truth, when we start reading the word and you feel up with all this zeal and all this fire, then you want to go try and uh, 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 preach the word to somebody. You want to try to condemn somebody and chastise them and then they make you look silly because you don't really know your Bible like that. Right. And they ask you questions and you ain't got no answers. So now you got to run back. Right. With the tail between your legs, so to speak. Right. This is why the most High tells us to be patient. Right. And gain experience before we actually go out and try to teach somebody, because not only should we not be trying to condemn and put down and things like that, your word should be seasoned with salt and you should be trying to uh, 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 preach the word according to, to the knowledge that he's giving you. So it takes time for that. When we on sincere milk, you got to chill a little bit. Right. Once you get on strong meat in a certain area, then you can teach it and you can teach it with wisdom. Right. But. When, he, when it comes to when it comes to the children of Egypt, I mean, when it comes to the children of Egypt, how uh, when it comes to the uh, children of Israel, he's not taking them uh, the short way. He's taking them the long way to build their faith. He's taking them the long way to build their faith. This is how the most high works with each and every last one of his children. We always wonder why we don't get certain answers to questions or uh, uh, we don't know things right away or when we are uh, pursuing after him, like uh, um, it takes time for certain things to be revealed. You have to you have to gain a certain amount of knowledge. you got to gain a certain amount of experience. you got to go through uh, some things. Right. So the most I can build your faith up. He does that slowly. And then with us, while he's building us up, he's breaking us down as well. Right. He's doing a full on construction project when it comes to us. And the purpose is so that when you are actually faced with a task, when he sends you to do something, that you're prepared, that you won't be afraid, that you won't be shaken. When you see something that looks like a giant, when you see something that looks like it can overtake you or overpower you, man, you're going to be like, man, this is nothing. I can handle this because I know the most high is with me. Not I can handle this because I'm great. Not because I can handle this because I, 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 you know, I've done this and done that. No, because I know the Most High is with me. That's what our that's what our trials and our tribulations should prove to us that the Most High is with us. Because you're still alive today, and you know you could have been dead at any time, but the Most High has preserved you. He's brought you through. He's forgiven you, right? He's built you back up in areas where He had to break you down in order to cleanse you. And so now when you face certain trials, you know you can stand. So when it comes to the actual task, when you face with a uh, 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 when you face with something that looks like a giant, and you just forget everything the most high brought you through, then you contend with his word. You saying that what he has done for you is not good enough, it ain't sufficient enough. Hallelujah. Hey, let's go to uh let's go to Exodus. Oh, we in Exodus. Uh stay in Exodus. Let's go to uh 21. Show us one more thing. I think it's 21. Hold on real quick. Family, I'm looking for the uh that battle of uh, when we first fought the Amalekites. Um, Y'all might know the one I'm talking about. When uh, when uh, Aaron and, and um, Aaron and uh, what's his name had to hold his hands up. That's what I'm looking for. For the rock bottom. Uh, I got it. Uh, Exodus 17. Exodus 17. I will run it for one. Just showing y'all, just showing y'all what the most high has done. Then we're gonna go back to numbers 14 and we're gonna see why it's so crazy that when they was just asked to spot the land and bring back the report, right? Even, even Moses told them, he said, spot out the land and spy out these things. Just bring back uh uh it's reconnaissance. Just tell us what's in there. Right? You ain't gotta you ain't gotta uh uh tell us 
you know what I'm saying? Hey, they big, we can't do it and all that stuff like that. Like they would they would add to it. They would they was they was putting out all type of fear. And he was like, he was like, just tell us uh, uh what it is, right? Before you go to war, you gotta count the cost. So tell us everything that they got, tell us what the defense looked like, how many men they got, right? Where they housed and everything was made out. You gotta know the terrain uh before you go into that war. And this is why we read this book because we know who the, we know who the most high is when we read this book, and then it also showed shows us the, the 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 terrain of the enemy, what they try to do against us, how they try to war against us, right? So that we can stand. All right, uh, we're gonna read this for one. Exodus 17 it says, "All and all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in, in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink." Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. And Moses said unto them, Why chide you with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water, and the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? Now, mind you, up until this point, there's been a couple times where they went without water, and the most high has provided. Right. And it, man, oh my God. This this is this is the heart of us today. And this is what we gotta start doing, family. This is this is what we have to refrain from doing. Even even Paul said it like this. He said it, it's like a man beholding his face in a glass. Right? You look in the glass, you can see your face, but as soon as you turn around, he said you forget the manner of person that you are. And we have to stop forgetting what the most high has done for us when we go through. Our faith should be building up every day because we know that the most high is just he's providing for us. You see all the craziness out there and it ain't coming near you. And even if it do, you got to believe that he's going to protect you. He's brought us through so many things. I know I got many testimonies and I, I can speak for a, a lot of my family members because I heard the stories. Like we all got testimonies of things that the most high has just brought us through and we know it was him that done it. Because there was no other way we could have made it. No other way this should have worked out other than uh, uh, um, against me, but it worked for me. How? We know it was the most high. We know he's the one we should be giving glory to. But then we go through another trial, even though it's, it's a trial, we know the most high still, or, or we supposed to know the most high still with us. Because it's a different trial, we start doubting. We start forgetting who we are in him. He just brought you through something, and now you come to another trial. And you're like, oh, man, how am I going to get out of this one? The same way you got out of the last one. Get on bending knee. Pray to Abba. Ask for guidance and instruction. So when they was having problems, they went to Moses. They didn't even think about crying out to the Most High for water. Why? Because their heart wasn't towards them. And he already knew this about him. Like, he, he had already said, like, man, if people don't want to hear me, I'll let Moses talk to me. He tried to talk to him. He was like, they don't want to hear my words. They don't want to hear me speak, right? He says, they, they, they know my instruction, but Moses, he knows my ways. Right? He knows my heart. They ain't even think about crying out to him. And he's already given them water before when there, were, when there was none. Right, turn bitter water to sweet. He's already done these things, but instead they tried they tried against Moses. Right, they were they was coming against him, and Moses said, "What? Why are you tempting the Lord? Because you're coming against the one that He set up, and so you're coming against Him." All right? And they say, "You brought us out of Egypt to kill us with thirst." Man, verse four it says, "And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me.'" And the Lord said unto Moses, go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, take in thy hand and go. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Mirabah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Is the Lord among us or not? 
Remember what we just read, Exodus 13. All right. Remember all the other acts that he's already done, including speaking to them himself. And as soon as they got thirsty and they had want, they said, is the Lord with us or not? Man. Like, man, y'all crazy. <laughs> all right, let's keep it going. Uh, verse eight, it says, then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go out fight with if uh fight with amalek tomorrow i will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of god in my hand so joshua did as moses had said to him and fought with amalek and moses and aaron and her went up to the top of the hill and it came to pass when moses held up his hand that israel prevailed and when he let down his hand amalek prevailed what so why is this significant? When we look at Moses, why was the holding up of his hands? Why was that important? Why was why were the people prevailing when Moses held up his hand uh, versus when his hand was lowered? What was it? So I got. Um, I guess I could uh, I would liken that to if we hold up our hands today, it's a sign of surrenderance to the most high and reverence to him in worship to him. And so if we're doing that, then we're then, of course, he's prevailing and he's fighting on our behalf. But when we let our hands down and we give up the fight, um, then he know then the, the battle goes towards for the enemy and not towards not for us. Mm -hmm. Right. And then when we when we look at this, that uh, beautiful answer. And when we look at this right here, when we look at verse nine, right? When it says, and Moses said unto Joshua, choose us out men and go and fight with Amalek tomorrow. And I will stand on the top of the hill. He says, with what? With the rod of God in my hand. So when he goes to the top of the hill, right? He's lifting up his hand. He's lifting up this rod of God. It says that the people, the people were prevailing. Now, if you can picture this and you can imagine this, right? There's no difference in uh in the people physically. It ain't like when he lifting up the hand, like everybody get swole and diesel, and now they can they can prevail and they can win and things like that, right? And then when he lowers his hand, everybody shrink down and they skinny and, and frail, and now they losing, right? So what was it? It was that when the people, when he was raising up this rod uh unto the most high, when he was raising up this rod to the people, the people uh received a renewed strength within their spirit. Like you gotta see. How the most high moves when he's moving with the people or moving with the army uh it's, it's a difference people don't die <laughs> like people don't suffer death when 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 the most high is moving with you when it when uh 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 the captain of the host is with you ain't nobody dying so when the rod is raised up the people have this renewed strength to fight this battle and they are prevailing when his hands are down right that strength is taken away because he has that rod of god that he's holding up Right. And I just want us, I want us to get this picture. I want us to understand this because what, what's about to happen is beautiful. We actually about to see uh, uh, faith in action. Uh, where were we at? Uh, Twelve. It says, but Moses hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on and Aaron and her stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady unto the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amulek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of, of Amulek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it uh, Jehovah Nisi, for he said, because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amulek from generation to generation. Now, the point I want us to look at is verse 12. It says when he Moses was getting tired because he lit, he physically couldn't hold his hands up uh, all day long, right? He couldn't hold his hands up throughout the entire battle. He was getting weary. He was getting tired, right? So even though he was being obedient, he was still getting tired. Now I want us to look at the fullness of this because when we look at Aaron and her, they held up his hands, right? They held they held up his arms, but what do we see that was put under him, right? It says they took a stone. And put it under him and he sat there on right so he couldn't he couldn't stand up and lift his arms up so they put a stone under him which held him up 
and then they were allowed they uh, uh it allowed them to hold his hands up so the people could prevail and we know that that stone throughout scripture uh it signifies uh hamashia right it signifies christ it signifies our king it says they put a stone under moses and that is what uh that is what allowed the people to prevail and then he said, and Joshua dis, uh, discomfited uh, Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of who? Joshua. So he said, even though they prevailed, right? He said, rehearse it in the ears of Joshua so Joshua could do what? He could understand that this is what the Most High does for his people. When there's a battle, if you are obedient, you will prevail. We went over that word prevail uh, uh, in terms of Israel and what that means. That means that you will you will overcome if you just let go of your own intellect, your own will, and you actually lean on the most high. That's what it is to prevail. That's what it is to remain righteous. It is to put your righteousness aside, what you think is right, how you do things, what you think should be done in the situation, and to lean on the most high's instruction. That's what it is to be righteous before the most high. Because when you do that, and the Most High sees that He knows that you have faith. He'll send you to do. He'll send you to do many things because He know you're gonna trust in Him and you're gonna do it with full obedience. That you're not gonna waver. Hey, go ahead, brother. What you got? I see your mic lit up. <clears throat> you gotta put God first with everything that you do. I like that. You got to put a first with everything that you do. <laughs> Man, right on, right on. You got to put a first in everything that you do. And we talking about everything. How many of us doing that, right? And trust me, this is something that I'm still working on to this day. How many of us are actually putting a first in everything that we do? Before your feet touch the ground, how many of us are looking up and saying, Man, Lord, I just thank you. God, I just thank you right now for just waking, for waking me up, for giving me life. For me having full strength. But we get so we get so accustomed to our daily routines, right? And our daily routines don't involve the most high that we just get lost in. When we get into the word uh, uh, when it's convenient for us, right? We get into the word on the Shabbat. We'll get into the word on Thursdays, right? We got prayer on Tuesdays. We'll do it then. Feast days, you know, we're going to get it in, right? But that's just routine. How many of us are putting him first every single day, no matter what? When you do that, you prevail through all things. It establishes a mindset within you. This is what he was trying to establish in Joshua. He told Moses, rehearse this in his ears. Because I don't ever want him to come into a battle and think that he can't win knowing I'm with him. And that's become many of us today. We come into these battles or we dealing with, we're dealing with certain people, certain things, and we think we can't win, but we say the Lord with us. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. When you get when you get in that place, when you get in that place that you can't uh uh that you can't face something and you you proclaim that the most high is with you, soon uh uh you're gonna rebel. You're gonna rebel against them. Go ahead, go ahead, huh? Yo, I just want to say this while you're touching this, because Moses, he was he never got weak. He didn't die because he was weak. So he was a, he was a hundred percent in his strength, right? But this battle was the Lord's battle. So what's happening is, when you're fighting for the Lord, all you can do is keep faith. But the minute, the minute you think that yo, you know what, I got it by myself, and then you try to do it on your own, you're gonna walk into flesh, right? And flesh is gonna get weak. So I'm just gonna say this: when this brother is holding his hands down. When he go to getting weak, right? We understand it's his flesh getting weak. But you touched on it was about faith because it's not his battle. Mm -hmm. He couldn't, Torah trying to show us this war, this, don't look at Moses because Moses can't, just because he got his arms up, he's not doing it. It's me anyways. But I still need you to at least make an effort to do something. You understand what I'm saying? But don't forget it's not Moses because Moses is strong, but he can't win this battle just because he got his arms up. It's me. That's how y'all want us to look at this thing. Cause sometimes we go to win a couple of battles and then we go to 
okay, I got this. I'm going to do this thing by flesh. And he's going to show you something. Keep mm -hmm. the faith. That's all I want. Yeah, that's a good word. Good word. Uh, and that's, that's what it is. Go ahead. Go ahead, Emo. No, I was just going to say this kind of points back to what you were saying uh, at first when we start to when we have these battles and then something we win something or something is overcome and then we get into something else comes up and we're like, oh, how am I going to get through this thing? And it's never I in the first place, um, just like it was it was um, the most high, the rod that was lifted up that was prevailing, helping them to prevail in the war. That's how it is all the time. Um, I was talking to the girls today about something that um, that I that uh, uh, some good news that I heard and I was like his track record is proven and we have to always get into a place where we trust him um, my prayer to him yesterday was I'm putting all my eggs in one basket and it's yours because for so long you trust him in this area and you trust him in that area and then you forget you stop trusting him in the areas that that in any in all areas because you are in trying to do it in your own mind and in your own strength and it's not you so you it, it behooves you to put all your eggs in that one basket give it all to the most high and trust him to do all things um because he has never failed his track record in the word and in our lives has always proven to work to be good he's never failed us never even if it didn't work out the way that we thought it was supposed to work out it still worked out and it still worked out in his timing. So when has he ever let us down? If we just continue to go back to those testimonies, we will always trust in him in all things. That's it. That's it. What the scripture tell you? Count it all joy when you do what? Fall into diverse temptations, right? It says for that is a trying of your faith. It is supposed to establish you. When things are trying to take you off the path, right? And you overcome those things, those things are supposed to build you up because you know, man, the most high is with me. He got me. Ain't nothing taking me off this path as long as y'all is leading me. As long as he's guiding me, nothing is going to take me off the path of righteousness. I'm going to stay true to it. Right? But then you face a little trial, you go through something, man, and then you start doubting. And when you start doubting, you can't look at the most high and contend with his word saying he's not doing what he's supposed to do. You got to check yourself. That's why self-examination is so important on a daily basis. Asking yourself or, or, or getting on your hands and knees and asking the most high, Am I doing everything that you want me to do so I'm not taken out of the way? We start getting crazy thinking that the word is defiled. You got people all over the world fixing their lips saying, God, you ain't do what you were supposed to do. Huh? Man, y'all better know y'all talking to the judge. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> These people right here, he, th he said, man, the Lord among us. They looking at they looking at him, man. Oh, is God even with us? Like, huh? Moses, like, he been giving y'all water. He been feeding you. You done made it this far. You ain't want for nothing. And you got the nerve to say, is he with you? You got the nerve to question that? Right? But then when the, when the battle come on, I guarantee everybody was, was like, oh, man. I, man, Lord, be with us. Be our strength. Right? When a battle comes, that's when you want to run back to him. But whenever, when you ain't got something that you think you want or that you think you need, and the most high ain't bringing it through, or he ain't, he ain't bringing it exactly when you want it, then that's when you want to say, oh man, he even with me or not. All right? God is forsaking me. Go ahead, Iman. Yeah, I was just gonna say, yeah, that's when when we say that that he hasn't done what he was supposed to do. That means you haven't done what you were supposed to do. Con we constantly look at the we want the blessing. We want that we're looking at the hand of the giver. But what are you doing? What are you? Do there there are things that he's required of us. We always want the blessing. Hey, give me the gift. Give me this. Give me that. But there's much there's stuff that's required of us. He's not just handing over you know things. Joshua didn't go into the battle just. To, uh, without with no intention of fighting at all he went knowing he was going to fight but with the trust and in faith that he was going to prevail because of who was with him that's the same thing for us we can't go into the battle going oh well i ain't got to do nothing but stand here and there has been cases when that has been so but if he didn't tell you that then you need to come with your armor on and your and your sword drawn and be ready to fight the fight and he'll just back you up he got you he gonna go before you your work ain't gonna be as hard as it could be. Now I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this is this is what <clears throat> when we dealing with when we dealing with people who rebel, I'm telling you, people rebel 
out of they rebel out of fear. You know what I'm saying? They rebel, uh, uh, they rebel out of fear, pride, arrogance, like all of those things are, are in them when you rebel. Right? You don't, you don't, you don't desire the most high, you don't desire his word. You don't, you don't uh um see how should I put this? You think you have a better way. Right. And when you like I said before, you think you got a better way. Um then you're gonna be taken out of the way. I say it like that. When we look at uh when we look at the people, understand that every time they they came against Moses, what did they say? What did, what was their mindset? Man, let's go back to Egypt. Right? They always thought that man, it's a better way. We don't have to go this way. Let us go back to Egypt thinking that that was gonna be better for them. The most I ain't dealing with that. Ah, right, what you got? Hey, shalom, shalom, family. So, look, I've been going through, like, First Samuel this week, and you speaking on rebellion and uh, rebellious. I want to bring this out real quick and tie in, you know, some of you saying uh, First Samuel 15, 23 through, um, through 24. It says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stu stubbornness is as an iniquity and an idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of, of the Lord and the word and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. And like what you're just saying, like people rebel because of fear, is just you know may remember that what I what I was in uh, this week. Right, right. Because remember, and remember, like it was it, when we talk about Saul, we actually went over this uh, uh, weeks ago. Right, when we talk about Saul. You got to understand what it, what his mind was. He was he not only was he feeling himself a little bit because now he was king, and and he had been he had been changed into a new man. He had even prophesied among the people. Remember that there was a uh, even a, a a proverb that was created that that Saul among the prophets. Right, so he was he was feeling himself, but at the same time, if you look at the mindset behind Saul, he was always seeking to please the people instead of o obeying the Most High's word. So when Samuel would bring Saul to words, Saul's mindset was, what are the people are what are the people gonna think? How do the people feel? What are the people gonna do? Right? If, if such and such happens. And so that caused a lot of his rebellion because he was focused on others. To the point where when Samuel told him to go to a certain place and wait for him to come before he offered sacrifices, Saul looked at the people and looked at their continents that they had fallen. And he said, Man, bring out the sacrifice. Let's just do this real quick. Right. And the most I came to Samuel and said, oh, he did it again. He disobeyed again. And Samuel had to mourn because he already knew what that meant. Right. You keep rejecting the most high. You keep rebelling against him. He just going to let you go. And he going to let you walk into destruction when you go against his word and you do it continuously because you don't have faith in what he's telling you to do. You're not steady in what he's telling you to do. You're not firm in his word, you're not rooted in. When that happens, you're going to be taken out of the way, taken out of the way quickly. And I'm saying this because there are many things that are coming to you. There are many things that are going to come to me, many things that are going to come to your family, and the purpose is to take you off. The purpose is to force you into rebellion. It's not about having questions for the most high. It's not about uh uh um it's not about not knowing something when it comes to his word. It's about your actions and how you handle those things. When you don't know something concerning this word, are you just gonna say that this word is a lie? Are you just gonna contend against his word? Right? You're gonna go get another word to strive against the actual word that's that's your salvation. Right? Are you gonna stand firm on the word and pray to the most high to reveal to you and give you understanding? Of him, because it's his words. You try to run out and get something else in order to uh, in order to prove or disprove the Most High's word. Where's your faith? Not in him. It ain't in him. So those people be taken out of the way. All right, and that's a good word. Uh, that's that's. I'm telling you, one of the things we gotta watch out for that. Don't be moved by the people. Don't be moved by what other people think. Don't be uh don't be persuaded by people who ain't coming with good doctrine, right? Which comes from this Bible. Said it uh last week, I think. <laughs> Actually got it from my brother Daniel, right? 
You got to stress this word holy off of you doubt it. You doubting that? You doubting this Bible? You saying this Bible temple where it's a lie? Everything in it ain't true, right? Scratch that word holy off. Matter of fact, just don't read it. Put it down. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, sis. What you got? I just wanted to co-sign on the impact rebellion and disorder can have. We read at the opening, you know, First Corinthians one ten. We read it every time. In this version, I have an amplified urging us to entreat, entreating us, brethren, by the name of our Lord, and that we be in perfect harmony and full agreement, and that there be no dissensions or fractions, factions or divisions, so we can be perfectly united in our common understanding, in our opinions and judgments. And looking at Exodus 17, um, just on, on, on verse 12, say Aaron and her didn't agree about the hands and the you know, what to do. Because, I mean, in this script, we hadn't seen or heard of anybody holding up hands of a person who ain't in the battle. Or, you know, what does that even have to do with what? Why didn't they hold Joshua's head? Why didn't they go out and fight with Joshua? You know what I'm saying? There could have been so much faction, dissension, confusion, rebellion. The spirit of Yah told them to do that. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a matter of Aaron and her to fight between whose hand? Well, I want the right hand. I want the left or no, Moses, what you doing? Sit down. Let me sit down. Let's trade. Let's let's switch. You know, it was people doing what they were supposed to do in the heat of battle. And Joshua, wherever he was, he saw victory because he was doing what he was supposed to do, whether he looked back and saw them doing the hand holding and the praying and the lifting up and the beseeching or not. People even in our ministry are doing stuff behind the scenes. Nobody ever knows. But then the other ones get victory. Because of what we, we or other people are doing, we have to be in our place. Now is definitely not a time we can be playing petty games. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Um, <clears throat> man, did we finish that up? Yeah, we finished that. All right. So, beautiful word, beautiful word to the whole family, man. Y'all own it tonight. When we look at, when we look at everything that, that's happened, right? The giving of the water, Destroying of, of Pharaoh uh, and the Egyptians who pursued after them, freeing them from bondage, right? And then now we see them go to the, go to war with the Amalekites, and they uh, they persevered over them, right? They prevailed over them by the Most High's hand. Now let's go back to Numbers 14, and it's important for us to bring it was important for us to bring that out because now we got a better understanding of of Joshua as well, right? Because Joshua, Joshua was cold from the very beginning. From the time they came out of Egypt, Joshua had been 100. All right, he he been at Moses' feet. Man, all right, where was that? Numbers, numbers 13. Sorry. <clears throat> all right, 20. <laughs> we're gonna start from 27. What? Israel. Got to get it together. <clears throat> now we going, we going somewhere now. Like we, we supposed to be, we supposed to be going to take the land that's flowing with milk and honey, right? A land that is, is abundant, that it is good soil, good land, right? The most I said he was going to bring us into that land. It's a land that, that uh, we didn't even, we ain't even till. We ain't even do all these things. Like this land is already plentiful. So they're going to spy out the land to see whether those things be true and to look at the defenses. Now, when we look at 27, they testify to the land. And then when we see the test, the testimony as far as the, the people, that's when we see them put forth their own words. Right? It says, and they told him and said, We came into the land whether thou sentest us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. And the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up, with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. 
they might be stronger than you, right? You might go against some things that if it was just you handle it, there's no way you can win. We know that that is our daily plight. We not If we go against anything, we do anything in this flesh, according to this flesh, you're done. Of course you can't do it. Right? Of course you can't do it. Of course it's by the will and the authority and the power of the most high that these things are going to be done. But what is the mindset of these 10 spies? Man, we can't do it. Man, we ain't that strong. And they're not just talking about them. They talking about Israel as a whole. They speaking this to Moses. They like, man, we done. Man, we finished, right? Caleb like, man, y'all need to chill with all that. He was like, we more than we we can more than, than overcome this thing, all right? But we gonna see. We gonna we gonna bring this whole thing up. It says, and they they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eat up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants and the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Now, remember the Most High took them through the wilderness first, right? They've already been through war. When you get to this point, it was supposed to be no doubt. When Moses is sending them to spy out, spy out the land, it's supposed to be a simple reconnaissance. Just simple, man, go and spy it out, come back, tell us what it is, and then we're going to go in there and we're going to conquer. That's it. Because the Most High's word has already went forth saying he's going to give us this. So it's going to come to pass. They've been shown all these things that's supposed to, they, they are supposed to be built up. So when they face this, where's the fear coming from? Right, it's the fact that they have forgotten all the works of the Most High that He's done for them up to this point. Either they've forgotten it, or they're looking at it like, "Man, that's nothing." Either way, it's disrespect. Right. Likewise, if you come into a trial and you feel like you ain't prepared for that thing, you feel a like, uh, uh, fear and, and anxiety coming upon you, man, you need to go to the Most High and, and, and check that spirit, telling Him to search you out. Because trust me, anything that we go through and we call ourselves the children of the Most High, he's preparing you. You got anxiety in you, you need to go to the Most High. You need to repent first and foremost and then tell him to strengthen you. Give you strength for the battle, right? There's, there's nothing uh, that we can't prevail against if the Most High is with us. All things work for the good of those who what? Love the Lord. And our call according to his purpose. Can't leave that out. All right, uh, 14, we're gonna keep this going. It says, uh, all right. it says that all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron and the whole congregation said unto them, would God that we had died in the land of Egypt or would God we had died in this wilderness. So the people, the, the 10 spies who had the evil report they brought this back to the people, and then what did they do? They caused the people to lose their confidence and their faith in the Most High. They caused them to want to rebel against the Most High. They literally questioning why they even out there after everything that they've been brought through. Three, it says, and wherefore has the Lord brought us brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? What are we seeing? Rebellion. Rebellion is entering into their hearts because they don't trust in the Most High's word, right? Now the 10 spies, their report was evil. It was bad, right? What they were saying was bad. The things that they brought to the people was bad. But the people also know the same words that these 10 spies know. Right? There's never an excuse for you to contend with the Most High or to lose your faith and your trust in the Most High. Somebody brings you an evil report, a false word, man, you're supposed to have enough uh, a strength and resolve in the Most High to put that thing down knowing that he's freed you, knowing that he's breaking, he, he, he's broken bonds and shackles off of you. He's delivered you from things. You're going to let somebody take you away from him? 
the one who redeemed you when it came to the people when they heard this report they should have been like man hey get these people away from us what are y'all talking about right the most high brought us a mighty he done, he done brought us a mighty long way with a mighty strong hand y'all got to get up out of here that's exactly what our mindset should be today whenever somebody trying to bring us foolish doctrines and fables from from devils trying to take you away from this word tell you the things that the most high has done for you man those things are a lot don't believe in it get away from you man they trying to lead you to rebel and contend with the most high's word they trying to they trying to get you right to see his word as something bitter that shouldn't be consumed hello everyone i was just thinking um in this situation and even in the situation in the garden and the situation with Saul, all the situations that we've talked about or mentioned um, tonight, it's um, it's doubt in our in our own hearts um, in what Yah has already established. Like in this situation, these were the leaders, and so rather than trusting what we personally experienced with Yah, we decided to follow the leaders um, that were doubtful. And it's like each one of us has to establish our own faith outside of anybody else. And um, like even in the situation with with Adam and Chua, you know, he, you know, she obviously already had a doubt because if she didn't, when he planted that in there, she would not have rebelled. So there's already something in her heart. And then she, unfortunately, when we do that, we then tend to bring people with us because, of course, he, um, Adam was right there. And then he ended up falling into the same. He just went along with it. And so we need to learn how to stand on our own. Yes, it's great to have people around us and it's great to have people um, to support us. But when we know what Abba has already established, regardless of what anybody says, we need to stand on what we know is right. Adam should have done that, you know, regardless of what she was doing. They should have followed um, Caleb rather than giving in to their emotions. So we just need to establish our faith because Abba is always going to test our heart he's always going to test our faith and if we're looking at anyone outside of yah including ourselves then we're going to fail yep absolutely absolutely sis. and and i want to i wanted to see this this story man because it, it's so important that we see this right because you have 10 spies who are bringing an evil report but 12 were sent out right so you got two that's speaking good. You got two that's not bringing it. You got two that's that's bringing a good report. Caleb, Caleb and uh, 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 Caleb and Joshua was bringing a good report, and then you had ten bringing an evil report, and they believe what the majority, even though the Most High had already established who He was to them, not just in word but in deed. And this is what you got to be careful of, not that uh, what they call it, groupthink, right? I don't care if everybody going this way. That don't make it right. What does the most high say? What does his word say? Don't matter. It don't matter where the majority is going. If it's wrong, then they all going into the ditch. They all going to suffer damnation. Right? You got a lot of people following false doctrine, false prophets and teachers and things like that because of the majority. Oh, if this many people like them, then they can't be wrong, right? Not so. You got to learn this word for yourself, just like a coach just said, this word has to be in you. Not only that, you can't forget the things that he's already done for you. You can't forget uh, 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 the wisdom and the word that he's already revealed to you. You can't forget those things. Your testimony is what binds you to him. It's what keeps you connected to him. That's your that's your personal uh, uh relationship so to speak when it comes to the most high it's what he's done for you it's so that nobody takes you out of his grasp you never forget the works that he's done for you you know it was him so you're not going to allow somebody to take you away from him uh with some other form of doctrine with some other word with an evil report right instead of listening listening to uh uh, uh caleb and joshua they were listening to the 10. Go ahead, Iman. 
No, I was just going to say back in 13, the very first uh, uh, second verse says, send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel of every tribe. He already gave it to you. So there was no need for you to do anything but go in and see what it is you were about to receive. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Just go and just bring back the report. That's all. It wasn't that big. It wasn't no big task. Hey, go spy out the land, bring back some fruit so people can see that the land is, 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 is bountiful, right? And just tell us what their defense is looking like just so we know what we're dealing with when we go up in there, right? But as far as being able to take them or not, that wasn't even that wasn't even a question. Moses ain't say, hey, go and see if we can handle these boys, man. Hey, go and see how big they is, man, they stature. <laughs> man, tell us, tell us, uh, uh, tell us, man, if, if we can do it, if we got it in us, right? He ain't say none of that. Man, we know the most high is with us. Just file the defenses, tell us how many men they got, right? And then we're gonna go in there and take it. That's all that was supposed to be done. These men had fear in their heart, though, and they brought that back to the people. Go ahead, Pussy. Just jumping on what you were saying about how many um the majority that, that group thing, Matthew 7 13. Wide is that gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That's it. That's it. It's um like I said, man, that, that thing that thing could be <sighs> try to follow the majority if you want to. Like I said, everything has to be searched out. Everything gotta be lined up with this word, it's gotta be examined by this word. You say everything got to be tried by fire. That's his word, right? It's going to burn up what needs to be burned up. It's going to keep and preserve um, what is true, right? What is righteous every single time. No matter who preaching, who teaching, whatever, go through this word for yourself and examine everything that's being said. Examine everything that's being said, right? Go ahead, Ima. Yeah, I was going to say, I even noted that, you know, what it the, the word says that it was 40 days before they even came back to Moses. So you survived 40 days in a land that you were afraid of, that were all these strong and mighty people that was too great for you to be. At, and you walked out of there with clusters of grapes and nobody stopped you on your way up out of there going, wait a minute, where you going with these all these grapes and stuff that you got on your shoulders? Two men had to carry them together. So mm -hmm. you all of that and you were fearful of what? So it, it definitely was a state of mind because it, it was not um, an actual fact. Right. Most I kept them while they were spying out the land. <clears throat> Man, let's keep this going. All right. Uh, what do we stop at? Verse, uh, verse five. Oh, no, no, no. Whew. We're going to read verse three again, then we're going to read four. Because this is Israel. This is us. All right. Uh, it says, and wherefore had the Lord brought us, brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Let us make a captain. So now that they're afraid to go against the children of Anak, right? They're afraid to go against these people. They now are deciding to go back to Egypt and then they want to make them a captain, right? To, to go there. What does that mean for Moses and Aaron? What do they what do they gotta do to them in order to make them a captain and go back to Egypt? <laughs> they gotta kill Moses. <laughs> and Aaron. To make them a captain and go back to Egypt, you gotta you gotta bring down the authority, the power. Right? They trying to go against, they trying to go against Moses and Aaron, who was set up as the high priest to go back into Egypt. And they gonna establish their own what leadership. Is that not happening today? And every in every uh uh I'll say every every wicked ministry that's established, that's exactly what they've done. They're not happy with the word, so they create their own word and they establish their own captains, their own leaders, right? To rebel in number. So they can go back into spiritual bondage. All right, let's keep this going. Uh verse five. It says, Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, were, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it, it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, 
a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only do what? Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Man, they rent their clothes and came to them and said, man, y'all are crazy for thinking this. The most I already declared that he's given us this land. He's already said that it's yours, that you're going to prevail. He was like, rebel not against who? Rebel not against the Lord, neither fear the people. Don't contend with the Most High's word. Don't strive against him and what he's declared. Don't lose your faith in the things that he's spoken to you and called you to walk in because you're facing a trial. Don't lose faith because you stressed out. Days might be going a little longer than you thought. This, this trial might be lasting a little bit longer. You thought you'd be done with certain issues by now. Man, you got to stay faithful to the Most High who said that he will deliver you. That he's with you, that he will strengthen you day by day. If you seek him, we're supposed to be, uh, even when it comes to the Shabbat, his word says that we're supposed to be what? Laboring to enter in. Then you labor in and enter into this rest. And when you come to him, he restores you so that you can keep pushing. Man, these people, they didn't even see the giants. The spies did. They going based off of a word. They ain't even going based off of what they saw themselves. The most high word has come, and he's already proven that his word going to stand. You got these 10 spies. They come with a word, and they're going to believe that over the most high. Man, Joshua, <laughs> Joshua and Caleb is like, what are you talking about? Man, don't fear them. Don't fear them, right? Don't fear the people. He said their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. He literally said, man, these people are bred to us. Said this thing about to be cake. Light work. It's easy, right? What are y'all mad about? What is, how is your continent falling? How are you angry? With the most high saying we should we should have uh stayed in Egypt or let us pick a captain and go back to Egypt. It said, rebel ye not against the Lord. Right? Verse 10, it says, But all the congregation bade stone, all the congregation bade stone them with stones, and the glory of the, of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. So they speaking the two. Are coming with a good report, and what do the people rise up to do? Stone them. Stone them. Get them up out of here, right? This is something that we got to deal with, and it's something that you got to prepare your hearts for uh, when you go to certain people and you try to you try to bring the word to them, right? It's, if a person got a rebellious spirit on them, they're not gonna want to hear that word. They don't want to. They don't want to be around uh, a good report. They don't want to be around people who are walking in righteousness. Right, they're gonna try to come against you. Either way, the most high is with you. You gotta move with wisdom in certain situations. This is what we was going over, David and Saul. This is exactly what happened, right? Saul had that rebellious spirit, and what he tried to kill David twice. Tried to kill him twice. David had to flee up out of there because he didn't want to put his hands on the most high's anointing. Right. Instead, he said, I'm gonna let the most high deal with it. I'm gonna let the most high deal with it. I'm gonna let him deal. Uh, uh, with who he is ordained and put in position, right? So we got to do the same thing. You come to somebody, you talking a word. We, we dealt with that last week. You come to somebody, you're trying to talk the word to them, they're coming against you. Hey, sometimes you just got to, hey, shalom to you. Get up out of here, all right? Pray to get that spirit up off of them. All right, uh, verse 10, it says, But all the congregation bade stone over stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, how long will his people provoke me? And how long will, will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed among them. Like, man, I, I've, I've been here. I've already showed them who I am. I, I showed them uh, 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 that I could deliver them. I showed them my power. I spoke to them. They, they, they were afraid of me when I spoke to them. They thought they was going to die when they heard my voice. Now they coming against some giants and they, they got more fear in them than they do with me. They got more respect unto them, flesh and blood, than my word. Right? 
Verse 12, I will smite them with pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make of thee a greater nation and, a, and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, then the Egyptians shall hear it, for, for thou brought us up, uh, the people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land, for they have heard that the Lord are among his people, that thou, the Lord, are, are seen face to face, and that thy cloud stand up over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of the cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. And that's not, I didn't want to uh, want to go that far. I just wanted to bring, I wanted to bring that out, that, that rebellious spirit, it comes with a judgment, right? Now we know that the, uh, uh, that Moses, he he prayed before the Most High, or he beseeched the Most High on their behalf, and then he said, I'm not going to wipe all of them out, but he definitely said, ain't none of them getting in, ain't none of them going to that land. Everybody standing here today, they ain't getting in there, right? And then the people tried to go fight, and then they, they, got, they got dealt with. But uh, I brought that out just to show you that that rebellious spirit, when you got that rebellious spirit, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have, uh, the Most High has to judge that thing. You got to judge it because you're going to bring that same spirit, you're going to put that same spirit upon other people, right, who are weak in faith. They're going to be afraid to walk according to the Most High's word uh, because of their lack of faith, right? They're going to be afraid to, to, to war. Right. And, and today we're talking about the spiritual war that we fight, in, but they're going to be afraid of war uh, because of their lack of faith. And we don't have people who are rebellious and people who uh, uh, who are afraid among us. When we talk about afraid of of men, right, we show no respect to persons Man, we 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 are God's children. <laughs> we walk in righteousness. We don't need to fear any man. Fear Yah, fear the Most High. Hey, Aki, you know what's real interesting? What's up? What's up? Moses did something very wise. Because he says he interceded for the people, right? Because the Most High said, I can make a greater nation just out of you. But then it goes to Philippians 2.12, where you still got to work about your own soul salvation. So even though the Most High could have went ahead and did that, Moses could have thought it was a great honor. He left it on Israel to go ahead and get themselves right before the Most High. Mm -hmm. Man, Moses was meek. He was meek. He was humble. And he understood, he understood the Most High's heart. It, it's similar, it's similar to David. In a lot of ways, when you look at these, when you look at our patriarchs, um, he understands that the Most High has to judge, but he knows uh, the Most High's heart is not that people uh, uh, will even be destroyed. But you can't just continue to provoke him, right? You can't continue to rebel against him and think that he's just gonna he's just gonna stay with you to to rebel, to to provoke him, to contend with him, it's, it, to to strive against him. All of those words is to reject him, It's to walk away from him because you deny his word and you deny the power. <clears throat> um man let's go to uh let's go to we actually gonna go to first Samuel uh 15. let's go before to first we, Samuel. before oh, we do that before we do that can we i was just looking at um verse three and just thinking how abba really is not to be trifled with Yes, he is patient, but as you just said, we can't keep rebelling um, against him. In verse 3, they said, um, Wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey, were it not better for us to return to Egypt? And Egypt, of course, is another word for captivity. And so we did end up eventually going into captivity, where to this day we fall by the sword and our children and our women and our brothers are prey because of that same rebellious seed that was planted all those many years ago. And it yeah. hasn't changed. We're still fighting that in us. It's a, it's a generational curse in us. Right? It's, a, it's a generational curse that is... Um, it, it, it's within it's within our nation, right? And we see it we see it all the time. This is why people who who even call themselves uh, professing to believe in Jesus Christ and things like that, when they come over here, they read this book and you see that man, it's, it's some things that you got to give up in order to get closer to the Most High. They walk away, 
right? This is why, this is why, um, man, this is why you got all these, these sayings that aren't even in the Bible, right? That that people use in order to come against to come against us who walk in righteousness, right? One and uh one of them is only God can judge me. I'm still waiting on somebody to show me that in the Bible. Still waiting for somebody to show me that scripture in the Bible that only God can judge me. We got a whole book called Judges. Right? The point is, is that a person is able to judge as long as they're doing it according to his word. Because his word, it perfects, it cleans, it washes. Right? It, 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 it saves, delivers, it breaks shackles, frees people from bondage. His word does that, not our words. So if I'm telling you, you doing, if I'm telling the brother and sister they doing something wrong according to the Most High's word, that means that you're doing something wrong to him. And you should want to get yourself right. But you kind of saw, you kind of saw some people, man, you trying to tell them, hey, in the word, they said we shouldn't do this and that. Oh, oh so what you perfect now? Are you coming against me now? All right, oh, I guess you know it all. Oh, I guess you righteous, huh? You Jesus now. You be like, man, man. Like, what's up, brother? Right? Contending with the word, striving with the word, rebelling. Right? And that's something that we have to continuously break, even within ourselves. You got to examine yourself according to the script. I can't say it enough. And you got to read this book. Learn what, what thus says the Lord. Right? Know who he is. Know what he's done. Know what he's capable of doing. Right? And know what he will do to those who strive against him. Know what he's going to do to the to the accusers of the brethren. All right? <clears throat> Good word, sis. Um, let's go to uh, let's go to First Samuel fifteen. We got a couple more to get to, and then um. We're going to bid each other good night. Um, <clears throat> All right. Yeah. First thing in 15, um, uh, I read it earlier. We're going to run it back. And then I got another scripture uh, to bring out on top of that. Um, it says, and Samuel said, have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices and obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than, than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of, of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Right. And this is this is the prophecy that came uh, to Saul when he rebelled uh, against the Most High's instruction to wait on Samuel. And this was his second time rebelling. And the reason why he was doing it is because of the people and him worrying about what they thought, not worrying about pleasing the most high. He was worrying about pleasing everybody else outside of the most high or instead of them. Right. So it says that his rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Let's go to Deuteronomy 18. We're going to take a look at Saul, his, his full rebellion. Because when we read the latter part of 1 Samuel, we don't see everything that Samuel has done against the Most High. Like We don't see everything in its entirety as far as his, uh, his disobedience. Right? We, don't see, we don't see all of it. Uh, we're going to read it later on, but understand that it's a lot of things that the Most High had, had already forgiven when it came to Saul. So when it came to that that uh, that first Samuel 15, that was the last straw because you're gonna keep rejecting me, you're gonna keep rebelling against me, and it's gonna it's gonna uh, persuade the people to do the same thing, All right? Uh, what did I say? 18. It says, uh, and I will raise them. Oh, hold on, hold on. Deuteronomy 18. Let's see. Let's see what I'm for. Um, we'll start at verse nine. Deuteronomy 18, verse nine. 
It says, when thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of these nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of, of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out before thee, from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God have not suffered thee to do so. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren, like unto me, unto whom you shall hearken. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God and whore in the day of, of assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken uh, uh, that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him, and it shall come to pass that. Whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require to him. And that's a, that's a future prophecy of, uh, of the Messiah. But I just want us to see here that he says, do not entertain enchanters, uh, observers of times, diviners, uh, uh, witches, right? Do not entertain them, right? They actually were supposed to be put to death. And the word says, suffer not a witch to live. Like they were supposed to be stoned to death. Now, this is this is the reason why. When we look at that, we're like, man, that's cold blooded. You gonna stone them to death? It's not just it's not just that they have uh, it's not just that they they're dabbling in witchcraft and things like that. It's the the whole intent behind it. When you look at these practices, these things are it's people trying to find another way to get to the Most High or another way uh, to exalt themselves. Right. They're trying to find another way to get saying uh, uh, spiritual knowledge without going through the most high. And this is why this is this is an abomination before the most high, because he created all things. All things belong to him. All you got to do is just come to him and he'll give you wisdom and knowledge as he sees fit. But when you start uh, uh, dabbling in witchcraft and all this other uh, all, all this other form of uh, uh, sorcery and things like that, you trying to go around him. You trying to go around him to get the same result. That's an abomination to him, right? So he said these people, they shouldn't even be found around you. They shouldn't even be among you, right? And so to rebel is as witchcraft because it's the same thing. When you rebel, it's you trying to find a way around. I want us to see this because it is, it's literally identical. It, it's the same thing, same thing. People today, they trying to find a way uh, uh, around this Bible, or they trying to use another book in order to disprove this Bible, they they witches. Same thing. They got that rebellious spirit on them, and that's witchcraft to the Most High. It's an abomination to them. You're trying to be holy without going through the one that's holy. You're trying to be set apart and sanctified. You're trying to be righteous, but you ain't doing it righteously. Right? Don't work. It's an abomination to the most high. Abomination is it, disgusting to him, right? He's disgusted with it. All right. Um, somebody else? All right, we're good. Let's go back to uh, 1 Samuel uh, 15. We're going to read that one more time. And then uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to get ready to close this out. We're going to take a look at Saul <laughs> and his final actions. We're going we're gonna to be done with Saul, uh, with Saul tonight. And then all I want us to take away from this is that the same spirit is here. You got to watch out for it. You got to watch out for ones who are trying to usurp the most high. They're trying to usurp his authority. They're trying to bring him down or they're trying to uh, do away with him altogether. And I'm talking about people who profess to believe. They're here. All right. Uh, 22 again, it says, and Samuel said, have the Lord as great delight in the burnt offerings and sacrifices as, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than a fat of rams. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness 
in, in stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. He have also rejected thee from being king. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to First Samuel or let's stay in First Samuel. Let's go to um, twenty. We're gonna go to twenty-eight. All right, we're gonna go to twenty-eight. <clears throat> oh yeah. All right. Uh, we're gonna run it from verse one. Now, Saul has already tried, he's already attempted to kill David. Um, and then he actually he actually uh pursued David, uh and tried to kill him um on a couple occasions, even after David fled. Right. The last interaction, he repented for his actions to David. Said that he was wrong for doing what he was supposed to do, but he never um from the time that he was rejected, he never repented to the Most High for, for his actions. Even when he told Samuel, uh, let me repent, he was like, let me do it before the people. Right? Again, his mindset wasn't, man, look at what I've done to displease the Most High. His, his mindset was always the people. Because I'm the king and I want them, uh, I want to be beloved, right, as that. And it's the same thing uh, when it came to him coming against David. It was because they were singing songs saying David is 10,000, killed his 10,000, but Saul his thousands, right? He became jealous because now David had the ears of the people. And he was like, what's next, the kingdom, right? So in his heart, it was never towards the most high. So he repented to David for the worst that he did, but he still um, did not repent to the most high. But I want us to take a look at this because now uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a war on his, on his front door. Right, we got to be careful about this. We got to be careful. Hallelujah. If you don't take nothing else away tonight, take this away. You got to be careful about how you walk in. You got to you got to walk with, with with all your heart, mind, and soul. You got to pursue the Most High because the Most High will allow you to keep. He'll allow you to keep doing the work. He'll allow you to keep uh, reading this Bible, doing Bible studies, doing all that stuff. He'll allow you to continue to do those things, but because you haven't repented to him, because you haven't you haven't sought him out and you continuously reject him in your heart, right? You continuously reject him when you by yourself, you're not even thinking on him. When the real battle comes to your front door, he's not gonna be there with you. And it ain't because it ain't because uh he's forsaking you, it's because you forsook him. I tell it to my daughter all the time. If you if you walk out of the house and you keep walking down the street and I'm calling out to you, but you don't want to turn back and come back to the house and you just keep walking, right? Once you get so far down the street, ain't nothing I can do. Ain't nothing I can do for you. You out of my sight at that point. Anybody can come and do something to you. I can't protect you, but I'm try. I try to call you back to the house. And you ain't want to come, right? We have to understand, or we have to. We have to. Read this word, be edified by it. Let the Most High correct you and judge you according to this word. Get yourself right on a daily basis. Because you could do all these outside works, but when you by yourself, where is your heart at? Is it towards you? Are you leaning on them when nobody else is around? I hope so, because when the real war comes and you look towards him, he might not be there. All right, we're gonna see this with Saul. All right, uh, 1 Samuel 28, verse one. It says, and it came to pass in those days, the Philistines gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with Israel in Akish and said unto David, know thou surely that thou shalt go out with me to battle thou and thy men. And David said to Akish, surely thou shalt, thou shalt know what thy servant can do. And Akish said to David, therefore will I make thee keeper of my head Forever. That's a different lesson for a different day, but David was, he was pretty much playing him, right? The, the, the whole time. All right, uh, verse three. It says, Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in Ramah, even in his own city. And Saul had put away those 
that have familiar spirits in the wizards of the land. Now, why would it note that? Right? That's why we had to go back uh, to that Deuteronomy 18. I ain't even pulled a scripture where it tells you don't suffer a wish to live because when Saul, when Saul was made king, right, he was supposed to deal with this. This was supposed to be dealt with, not just not just put them away, right? They were supposed to be dealt with. All of these people, but instead they said he did what? He put them away. Put them outside. He put them outside of the camp. He let them go free, right? It's important to note that. Uh, and the Most High allowed this. He allowed he 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 allowed him to do it, right? He uh 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 he looked past it. He allowed Saul to continue his reign. That's why I said like everything that Saul did, we don't we don't even see it until we and we don't even know the full account anyway. We ain't got the whole the whole story, right? We just got we got certain acts that he did. But when you look at the whole thing, he was doing all that all that rebelliousness, but it was certain things that the Most High just he just looked past and allowed him to still reign. Still was sending, uh, sending Samuel to prophesy to him, right? Man, there's so many things. I'm telling you, if the Most High was the was the partially judge us for everything that we did wrong, oof, we wouldn't make it out of bed, right? His grace and mercy is is forever before us. But just like the scriptures say, just like Paul said, shall we continue in sin that His grace may abound? God forbid, right? We got we to gotta seek and search to get ourselves right. All right. Let's keep going. We get, it's getting late. Uh, where are we at? Verse 4, it says, And the Philistines gathered, gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunam, and, and Saul gathered all Israel together, and they pitched in Gilboa. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was what? Afraid. And his heart greatly trembled. But wait, the Most High is supposed to be with you, right? The Most High is supposed to be with him, but his heart was afraid. Why? Because he had already in his heart rebelled against the Most High. Well, let's keep reading because this, this is crazy. Verse 6, it says, And when Saul inquired of the Lord, what? Now Saul had tried to kill David twice. He done pursued, he done, he done tried to kill him twice while he was in his service. He pursued after him and tried to and tried to kill him. Caused a civil war between Israel. Literally had families. Divided against families, ready to stand out, ready to stand in battle and, and kill each other. He did all this, but then as soon as he saw the host of the Philistines, he like, oh man, let me go to the Lord. Oh man, like now when we see the real battle, you cause all this dysfunction and chaos, so all this discord, but now that it's an actual war before you, and you see that you can't handle it, oh now let me go to the Lord. That's that rebelliousness. I'm telling you, man, we got to be careful. We got to be careful, Israel. Not only are these people out there, but like I always say, man, you got to make sure this ain't named among us. You got to make sure that this is not found in you. Now he want to go to the Lord, right? It says, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by your realm, nor by prophets. Right, so he trying to he trying to seek the prophets, ask for a word. Right, he he going to sleep. He ain't waking up with no no dreams, no nothing. The Most High ain't talking to him. The Most High ain't talking to him. Right, it says then said Saul to his servants, Seek me a woman that have a what a familiar spirit, that I may go to here and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that have a familiar spirit in Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went and two men, and he and he went and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night, and he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. So Saul tries to go to the most high. He doesn't get any reply from the most high, but because he's still afraid of this army, he's still afraid of this of this battle that he's about to go into, he seeks another way. I want you to think about his heart. His mindset was not, it was never on the most high. It was never, he was seeking the most high, but that, that's only because it, it was convenient for him. He, it, man, let me see what the most high got to say, but you could tell his heart wasn't there because as soon as that ain't pan out, man, he ain't cry loud. He didn't lament. 
You ain't see you ain't see the next scripture saying and Saul covered himself in sackcloth and ashes and repented. What did he do? Oh man, let me go and find another way. That's what some of our brothers and sisters are doing today. Got questions about this book, and then instead of praying to the most high, instead of crying out to him, oh, let me go find something else. Let me put the book down. Right? You haven't you 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 dealing with your, your your family members and stuff like that. You're trying to bring them the word. They're not receiving it. Instead of crying out to the Most High, then let me go find another way. That rebelliousness is as witchcraft, and it will lead you to the path of destruction. You own a path of destruction. It will lead you to the very end. I want us to see this whole thing, um, and then we'll be done. I'm gonna try not to be too long uh, from this point forward. All right. Uh, what is it? Where are we at? Uh, verse 9. It says, And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul have done, how he have cut off those that have familiar spirits and the, wiz and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? Did I finish out that last one? I think I did. All right, so he comes before the woman, and the woman says, I know I can't, I know I can't do this, this, this witchcraft pretty much because. I'm going to die if Saul hears about it. She does not know that this is Saul at this point. He disguised himself, right? So when he comes to her and he's just seeking a woman with familiar spirit, she doesn't know that it's him yet, right? Uh, it says that Saul swear to her by the Lord. What y'all catch this, man? Hallelujah. Man, it says, and Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, as the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Is the Most High, is, is the most high speaking to Saul at this point? He is no. not. No, he's not. I speak to him. Not speak. Say that uh, y'all here? Yeah, go ahead, my brother. Bring it up. You uh, you, are you talking uh, to me? Yeah, yeah. You you might let up. You you had a comment? Oh, okay. My fault. I thought. Yeah, no. I, were you you said was uh, you you said was Z here? Yeah, I'm right here. <laughs> I think hold on. I think uh we might we might have it confused when I said does uh the saw hit the most high? Is that, is that oh maybe? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah. My mic it's it's been cutting in and out. I apologize. Uh, you straight, you straight, you straight. I thought I was tripping. Yeah, if you if your mic cutting in and out, you might have to exit out and come back in. That happens that happens sometimes just with uh ghost of meeting. Okay. No, you good, you good. All right, um <laughs> all right, uh so he wasn't talking to him at this time. He wasn't speaking to him, right? But Saul still in his heart thinks he has the power and authority to, to swear something by, by the Most High when the Most High's word has already condemned that thing. Now, this is the fullness of Saul's witchcraft and his wickedness. That he literally, the most high he's speaking to him, he's already tried to get on his hands and knees and pray. He ain't dreamed the dream. He ain't saying nothing through the prophets. He goes to this one with familiar spirits and he said, I swear to God that nothing's going to happen to you, right? As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. So he he is making an a, a, a oath to this woman or a promise to this woman on the most high's name when the most high's word already says what to do with those who have. Uh, familiar spirits, right? This is how crazy it gets. This is how crazy the rebellion gets and the rejection gets when people turn their heart away from the Most High. They start what? Adding and taking away according to their own mind, according to their own heart. Mark those individuals. Don't let them come near you. Get away from those brothers and sisters. They're trying to tell you, I know the word says this, but trust me. And then go on to speak lies. Get those people away from you. Right? They they headed towards destruction, eternal destruction. <clears throat> All right. Verse 11. It says, Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up to thee? And he said, Bring me up, Samuel. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. So now she, 
when he asked for Samuel, she actually she does work. She sees she sees Samuel. Then she already knows she already knows what the deal was. Like you you saw right. So she says, "Why?" Uh, 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 she cried with a loud voice, and the woman spake to Saul, "Why is thou deceived me? For thou art Saul." And the king said to her, "Be not afraid, for what sawest thou?" And the woman said unto Saul, "I saw God's ascending out of the earth." And he said unto her, "What form is he of?" And he said, "An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle." And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, "Why hast thou disquieted me?" To bring me up. And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me and answereth me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called thee that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. So he's doing what? Trying to seek instruction, but not, a, not by way of Most High, by the way of witchcraft, by the way of wickedness. Right, sorcery. Calling on Samuel, thinking Samuel is about to tell him uh, or give him instruction. So, I mean, you can put idolatry in there, all of that stuff applies. And Samuel gonna say as much, right? Let's keep reading. We're gonna, we're gonna try to finish this up. 17, it says, um, <clears throat> and the Lord, uh, oh, 16, then said, said Samuel, wherefore then does thou ask of me, seeing the Lord has departed from thee, and it's become thy enemy. He like, what are you coming to me for then? Like, I'm gonna tell you something. Like, I'm gonna tell you something different. Like, I'm gonna give you instruction, knowing you're not with the Most High. And this is what we gotta understand: people who rebel, they not with the Most High. Their only intent is to take you away. Their only intent is to take you away. It's the it's the bring you. A word. They not just gonna come and tell you. Like I said, man, people are subtle, especially the people that we're dealing with today. They're not just gonna come and tell you, "Hey, put down the Bible." No, they are gonna try to bring you something. They are gonna try to put it in your brain to say, "Oh man, this Bible is no good." <clears throat> Beware. All right, seventeen. And the Lord, and the Lord have done to him as he spake by me. For the Lord have rent the kingdom out of thine hand and given it to thy neighbor, even to David. Because thou obeyest not the voice of the Lord, nor executeth his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. And tomorrow shall thy and thy sons be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. And Saul fell straightway all along on the earth and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel. And there was no strength in him. For he had eaten no bread all day, nor all the night. And the woman came unto Saul and saw that he was sore troubled and said unto him, Behold, thine handmaid have obeyed thy voice, and I have put my life in thy hand, and have hearkened unto the words, uh, hearkened unto thy words, which thou spakest unto me. Now therefore I pray thee, hearken thou also unto the voice of thy handmaid, and let me set a morsel of bread before thee, and eat, that thou mayest have strength when thou goest on thy way. But he refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, compelled him. And he hearkened unto their voice. So he arose from the earth, sat upon the bed. And the woman had a fat calf in the house. She hastened to kill it and took flour and kneaded it and did bake unleavened bread thereof. And she brought it before Saul and before his servants. And they did eat and they rose up and they went away that night. Let me say this. Saul goes to Samuel. He does receive a word from the Most High. And that word was that not only has the kingdom, not only has the word been fulfilled or the prophecy that has been fulfilled, that the kingdom is, is rent from you and given to David. But he says, tomorrow you and your sons are going to be with me. Now, if we look at the, if we read the rest of Saul's, uh, uh, his actions all the way to, to the end of 1 Samuel, and I encourage y'all to do that. Saul still goes into battle, of course, right? Not only does he go into battle, but he brings his sons with him. Like the, the man, just when you see Saul's like, I mean, if this was a movie, man, you just seen, you seen somebody who, who started off as a hero, they, be, they became like the, <laughs> the evil villain by the end, right? When you look at Saul's mindset, that it's not even in his mind to tell his sons, hey, y'all chill. 
right? He's still like, no, nah, we're gonna go to war. I almost, I almost think like in his, in his heart, he probably thought he could still prevail some way, in, in some way, shape, or form, right? But nevertheless, he was destroyed. His end was him falling on his own sword and killing himself because he was afraid uh, of what the Philistines was going to do to him if they caught him. Right. And we got to understand that this is uh, this is the fate of us who contend with the Most High's word. We strive against his word and we lose faith in his word. We let somebody take you away uh, from him and you start walking in the other direction, this is our end, it's self-destruction. You destroy your own self. Nobody should be able to rend you from his hand. He's done too much for us. He's done too much for us. Even if you even if you just woke up yesterday and you just started to believe him and believe this word fully, look back. He's brought you a mighty long way. And that's even more of a reason to repent and stay on the path because you know you didn't know him then and he still had his heads around you. Go ahead, Ima. Um, I was going to say that um, Saul's representation is that of um, of Hasultan in this at, at this very moment. In that um, he desired, he was so selfish that he desired to take even whomever with him. You didn't you didn't think enough to save your even your sons after you've been warned and told that even you and your sons are going to be with me tomorrow. Um, you didn't even think enough to say, OK, I'm not going to take my sons. I'm going to let my sons live and I'll just go and suffer this thing for myself. Selfishly, you just decided you take as many people with you. That's the, that's the mindset of Hasadon. Let me draw a third part of the angels with me. Let me draw a third part. Let me draw as many as I can down to the pit with me. That's what he did. And then to the point, even to the point of. Uh, when the witch uh, talked to him, she said, when Samuel talked through the witch, he clearly said, the Lord is your enemy. He's mm -hmm. not your friend. He's not with you. You can't consult him. Nothing is going to work in your hands by the by the Most High Yah because he is your enemy at mm -hmm. this point. Yep. Tell you, we got to be careful, saints. We got to be careful. Stay true to this word. Stay true to this word. Don't let nobody take you off. Check your spirit on a daily basis. Check your spirit on a daily basis. There are some areas where we still rebel against him. There are some areas where we're still stubborn against him. Right? It's, 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 it's certain things that we know if we if you are honest with yourselves, but you should be, because a lot of yourself is crazy. That's just all out crazy. When you're looking in the mirror, at least tell yourself the truth. Right, keep it real with yourself. That way, that way you can still be worked on. <laughs> you lying to yourself when you buy yourself, that's insane. But we got to understand that that it's important to check ourselves to make sure that there aren't any areas. If there's something, if there's something, if we be honest, there's if there's something that we're lacking in. We know he's called us uh to do something more. It's not so that we can be uh glorified by man it's not so that we could be better at you know these these positions you know at the church and stuff like that it will it will cause those things to happen but the purpose is always to get closer to him the things that he calls you to do is to get closer to him the instruction that he gives you is for you and him it's, it's to build you up so that you can continue to do his will right um so we shouldn't just be getting in our word just so we can teach we should be getting in our words so that we can learn of him right the teaching just comes out of it right when it comes to praying like yes we pray for others we stand in the gap for our family members uh we pray for situations and circumstances but how often are we praying that he searches us out how often are we praying and, and saying lord like like keep me on the path show me show me the error of my ways. show me the things uh, that I'm, the areas I'm lacking in, right? How often are we praying those things? How often are we praying to keep the relationship with him tight? Right? And we're not doing those things, but instead we get caught up in works. You can still walk away from him. You can still, you can still uh, uh, be found rebellious in his eyes if you're not doing the things that he called you to do. Right, obedience is better than sacrifice. 
So praise on, ask him, meditate on his word, read his word, and uh, stay away from those who are walking in the spirit. That rebellious spirit is uh, is only going to get worse. It's only going to ramp up worse. Uh, Hamashiach said in the latter days, the, the, the heart of many shall wax cold. Like people are only going to get worse uh, when it comes to how they see uh, his children, how they see the righteous. They're only going to rebel even more. And uh, we have to we have to be careful. We have to be careful. Don't associate yourself with those people. Uh, that the most High has to call you to do so. You know, I'm telling you, they, they some of these people are crafty, man. They can put stuff in, in your mind, sow seeds. And uh, you don't know where that thing can take you if you're not strong enough. Let the Most High build you up, and uh, just stay stay strong in Him, and, and you'll be able to conquer all things. Learn this word and believe it. Believe it. All right. Uh, that's all I got at this hour. Uh, I started late, so I ran over. I apologize for that. But uh, anybody got anything before we uh, we pray out? Anything at all? More Troy, I just want to thank you for this 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 word. <laughs> It's amazing how uh, I don't know. <laughs> so Zach was like, and I, and I think of this. I, I got a chance when I was talking to him earlier. I told him about this wonderful assembly, and I sent I sent a message to let you all know I wanted to invite him. And I'm telling you, he's like, he heard his name right. <laughs> Every time you we were on these Thursdays, I hear my name, and I'm not happy about it. <laughs> I hear I hear the spirit speaking to me. Like this message is strictly for me. And I, it's not that you are uh, <laughs> singling anybody out. It's just wonderful that the Ruach HaKodesh, our, Yahuwah's Holy, Holy Spirit is really waking up his people and talking to his piece of people in a very personal way now. And your your um, the title of the message about destruction coming before rebellion or re destruction leading rebellion it's one of those things we really we really got to look and i am i'll speak for myself looking at every crevice every corner of my life to make sure i'm rooting it out hallelujah 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 um yeah man i appreciate you being on brother i uh, hope, you, hope you got something from it um you know it's, it's all praise to the most out man it's, it's, go ahead you got you got something go ahead, bro. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, you know, I appreciate you guys, you know, having me come on and, you know, it, it's really been a pleasure. Like I was talking, I was telling uh, Regina earlier, like everything, it happens for a reason. And, you know, just talking to her and, you know, coming on tonight's call and just like hearing some of that, that really like that moved me. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, but Coach Regina, if you, if you can, like put them in a, put them in a group me too. Go ahead and add him to it. That way he can, he can stay connected to, to what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> uh, Jay, what you got? You got up? Hey, you know, shalom, man. Good word. You know, I know I ain't been on in a minute, but um, I've been deaf in the back, you know, getting in with, the, you know, with his word. But it was today, it was something was saying get on, right? Uh, Usually when y'all be, when y'all take some group, I don't really like see everything, but today I say like 8.15. And I was in, you know, like I said, I'm in Samuel, and I was, I'm, I wonder, like, how is rebellious wickedness? So I, I was going to stay and study that. I mean, how is it, um, how is it witchcraft, right? So I was going to stay and study that. And someone's like, I'm reading, it's like, man, get on, right? I'm like, so I ended up getting on, and nobody's going to touch it. Then you just kind of uh, made it even, you just opened up, understand, how, you tied in how, how is it witchcraft? Because I was like, how is witchcraft? Because I'm thinking about how I rebellious. I used to be just in life and just from the most high everything, my parents, I'm like, so I was, a, you know, I was doing this thing, and um, I wanted to study on it more, and then you kind of brought that thing to light, especially towards the end. So, you know, all praise to Most High, and uh, thank you for the for the lesson today. Yeah, all praises, appreciate it, Art. And uh, yeah, even even when it comes to the parents, you're looking at um, I believe it's I believe it's Deuteronomy 21. Don't quote me on that. It might be uh, it might be in Exodus, but uh, it talks about uh, that rebellious son. Rebellious son said the parents bring him to the elders, and he's still and he's still rebellious. They stone him to death. Get him up out of there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, that that uh that's something that we got we got to be careful of because for us it could be it could be minor things. We know that there there's certain acts of rebellion that's big, but for us it could be little things within our lives that we're rebelling against the Most High, and those things can turn into big things. 
uh, everything that we that, that the Most High instructs us to do, it is preparing you for something. He doesn't he doesn't waste time. Like everything is intentional. So when he calls you to do something, it may seem small to you. Like he might he may tell you to get in your word every single day. You might get that get that 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 inkling. Just man, I need to I need to get in my word. I need to read the scripture. Man, it, it's preparing you for something. It's, pre it's preparing you for the battles. It's giving you a uh, 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 strength. It's giving you ammo. Armor is giving you armor and all those things like that, so that when you come, you are ready and that you won't fear. This is why we have to make sure that we're not turning away from Him in even the smallest of things, right? Stay the course in all things uh, that He's giving you. Um, it, it, it'll go well for you. You're gonna prevail. Uh, but if you rebel in those small areas, once you, once you face uh, whatever that task is, then you're going to rebel in, in an even bigger way. And it can lead you down. Um, uh, it's a slippery slope. I'll say that. I'll say that. But um, anybody got anything else? Anything at all? Um, all right, man. I appreciate the family. Y'all willing, I will see y'all on the Shabbat. We're going to pray out. And, uh, man, let's just get it, family. Let's, let's, let's stay on the path. Stay on the path. Man. He got us. He got us. All right. Let us pray. <clears throat> Abba, y'all, we just thank you right now. We give you all praise, honor, and glory just for the word that came uh, tonight, the word that you have brought forth. We pray edification was had. We pray that everyone received uh, their portion of what you have for them. And we just ask that that right now that you would, you would remove from us uh, 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 that spirit of rebelliousness that would be found in any last one of us. You were you remove from us that spirit that, that contend with your world or to strive against uh, something that you have told us to do. Uh, we just ask right now that you would keep that hedge of protection around us. Keep us from the ones who who strive uh, 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 who strive against what it what is true. Keep us from the ones who who will. Uh, 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 push through or press through to try to take us away from you. We just ask that you would hedge us about, uh, even if we come in contact with those people, we ask that you would mark those, bring to our, our remembrance, bring to the forefront of our minds uh, uh, this word of what it is to rebel, bring to the forefront of our minds uh, uh, the things that you are pleased with and that that displeases you. Bring your word to the forefront of our minds. Let it be frontless between our eyes so that when we see those things that we may, we may flee from, from, from all of those things. Even your word says, flee from the things that appear to be evil. And so we just ask that for those individuals that you would show us a sign whenever we come into the presence of them so that they may not sow any, any wicked seeds of anything uh, is trying to get through. Uh, uh, give us the power and authority to cast that thing down right now so it does not overtake us. But we know that you have called us to do greater works. You have called us uh, 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 to break these generational curses, to restore the walls of Jerusalem. You have called us uh, 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 to come uh, uh, together as one uh, with Christ as our head. And so we just ask right now that you would continue to lead us and guide us into perfection um, and that you would just you would just forever have your hand on us we thank you for your grace and your mercy, uh, uh, two things that we do not deserve, but yet because you love us, you continue to show it forth to us. And so we just ask that while grace and mercy is still present with us, that, that we would have the mind to repent. Uh, we would have the reminder to, to turn back from our wicked ways and to turn uh, to you with our whole hearts, serving you with everything that we have. Uh, and I just I just thank you right now just for this, this body of believers, for this group right here. I thank you uh, for every righteous group that is scattered across the four corners of the world. I ask that you will protect each and every last one of us, protect our children, uh, keep them uh, from hurt, harm, or danger, keep them from, from wicked words being sown into them that would cause them to rebel against their parents or, or uh, uh, rebel against you in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we just thank you and we, and we love you. We give you all praise, honor, and glory in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach. We thank you and we love you. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, family. Uh, love y'all. Shalom. Uh, y'all have a, a blessed night. We do 1 Corinthians 1, 10. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's run it. Let's run it. Uh, yeah, I throw that up. 1 Corinthians 1, 10. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Hallelujah. Amen. Shalom, family. Love y'all. Shalom. Shalom.
Shalom. Shalom, family. Shalom.